Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. The Hamptons Film Festival is heartfelt and sincere and is more about artistic integrity. It's just wonderful being here. I'm just excited to be around these other wonderful actors and so much talent. I feel really fancy. I've never been before. I feel like they're going to find out I'm from Maine and kick me out. This is an important film festival because it gives us a chance to see the world through other people's eyes. Everyone said, oh, you're an overnight success. Well, I'd been acting for nine years. That was one long night. Please join me in welcoming back Maggie Gyllenhaal. Edward Norton. Rob Reiner. Mark Russell. Ladies and gentlemen, Laura Dern. Marty Scorsese and I did a surprise conversation on that very first year of the festival. This is about watching films the way they were meant to be. Every time you come to the festival in the fall, everybody has a good time. It's a great, great, great weekend for everybody. Hello, darlings. Welcome back to Cognac's Corner. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Willow Lane, and we are here at the Hamptons International Film Festival. It's going to be filled with filmmakers, actors, and many celebrities. Keep watching. More interviews coming up right here at the Hamptons International Film Festival. Pink champagne kisses. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Willow Lane. We're here at the Hamptons International Film Festival. And I am here with one of the filmmakers. He's going to introduce himself and tell us about his fabulous film. Well, uh, this film is called The Forest Maker, and indeed it is about a man, an Australian agronomist who got the alternative Nobel Award for his way of growing entire forests without planting a single tree. Amazing! Without planting a, a single, single tree. tree. By going back to the root system, which underground, as he calls it, well, the underground forest for 30, 40, I mean, 50 didn't years. It originally, people had to put seeds into the ground. Yeah, but uh, and once you have roots in the ground of old, old trees from decades ago, you can reanimate them, and then you have the most important thing, the powerhouse underneath, and the plant you plant doesn't have to grow roots. So it's, it's as obvious and as simple, and so far he restored six million hectares in the Republic of Niger alone. Wow. Now what inspired you to make a movie like this, a film like this? Yeah, well, after 30 years of uh, feature films, and no, 50 years of 30 feature films, um, I was just uh, struck by this guy and I thought this ought to be better known and it should spread around the world. And that's why I'm traveling like an activist, like a young filmmaker with my movie <laughs> at age 83. You know, I'm, I'm better known like for the Academy Award winning a Tin Drum or things like that or the death of a salesman with Dustin Hoffman or so many others. Yeah, you made uh, a lot of films. I, I made more than 30 feature films, wow. yeah. Was and the, the documentary is great, you know. You, it's nobody, a, is it easier? Nobody, it's much easier in the sense that you're out there alone with maybe another cameraman and a sound man and, and you just travel the world and you discover and you get engaged with people you'd never meet otherwise. So it's, uh, it's a very, very rewarding experience. I can imagine it, but working with uh, actors can be difficult too because they're temperamental, right? Yeah, well, but the temperamental ones are the best ones. Uh, right, uh, really? The good thing about a documentary, you don't have to explain the motivation. That's true. What was the most difficult actor you worked with? Can you tell us? I can tell you, uh, even though uh, he passed away, and I shouldn't say anything but good about him, but Sam Shepard in Voyager, a film with Julie Delpy, was really the most difficult one, because he didn't want to be an actor to start with. He said, it feels like whoring. I said, really? well, it may be, but you're very well paid. <laughs> and you're good at what you do. Well, obviously, yes. that's why you wanted him in your film. Yeah, well, he saw himself more as a writer. And actually, the rewrites of the dialogue he did were excellent.
Amazing. So Sam Shepard. Right. I'll have to, yeah. He was your most challenging yes. actor. Yeah. Uh, we could because say. he didn't consider himself an actor. It's, uh, he, he was uneasy with being in front of a camera. And yeah. I think anybody who ever worked with him would yeah. confirm that. <laughs> That's probably true. The so, most rewarding was Robert Duval. Oh, he's a fabulous yeah, actor. He was wonderful, Robert yes. Robert Duval. Yeah. Aren't you a lucky man? You yeah. get to work with so many yeah. <laughs> so many fabulous actors, so many fabulous artists. You've done such a you have such a body of work behind you. It's yeah. pretty amazing. But you like the documentary. This is new for you. It's completely new, but it's not bad to start at eighty all over again. Now, <laughs> it makes you feel young. <laughs> yes. Now let me ask you: uh, Is there a trailer for this documentary? Do oh you have yes. I I mean, uh, if it's not on, it should be online. Uh, the The Forest Maker. The Forest but Maker. Exactly. Other Other than that, the uh, I'm sure the festival can provide it. Now, where can we go to find out more information about this film? Do you have a website? Oh my God, yes, but I forgot the name. I know it starts with www. www.probablythefarestmaker.com. <laughs> 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 you call it the Forest Maker. That, You'll find it. Can, are you on Instagram? Are you on Facebook? No, I have no social media. I'm God another bless generation. you. I know I am too, but I, I'm. I'm part of the yeah. what's going on now, but I'm from your yeah. generation. Great. Well, darling, but if you give me your card, I'll send you a link to yes, all the material. I will. Okay. Let's air kiss. Oh. More interviews coming up, darlings. Pick champagne kisses. Imagine, trees could be growing on degraded land. Imagine, desertification could be stopped. Hundreds of millions would not have to leave their homes. Imagine, all that is needed is still there, right beneath our feet. Imagine, a whole underground forest is waiting to emerge again. Desertification is advancing at an alarming pace. People have given up. They feel like helpless victims of climate change and poverty, whose only option seems to be migration. But there is hope. Australian agronomist and alternative Nobel Prize winner Tony Renaudo discovered a simple technique, making global regreening possible. What looks like small shrubs and bushes are actually trees, waiting for the opportunity to grow, feeding on the enormous root system that is still intact. The pruning consists in reducing the number of stems so that they can grow straight and tall. It's embarrassingly simple. Now, people are expecting some big scientific explanation and complex machinery and all this kind of thing. It's embarrassingly simple, but I'm not ashamed because it works. The farmers manage the pruning themselves. Every two months, every two months we, we do the pruning. Word is spreading fast from Senegal to Somalia. In Niger alone, six million hectares of forest have already been restored. You can visibly see the difference. 7% of the Earth's surface could become green again. Two to three billion hectares of land, producing wood and food for hundreds of millions. And more importantly, giving people back their dignity. But what I really see when I go back into the villages is the restoration of hope. And when you have hope, you can do anything. 
you believe in yourself, you believe in the future, the restoration of hope is the real gift. Imagine we could spread this message around the globe and achieve restoration on an unprecedented scale. I firmly believe that with the right production methods, Africa could easily feed the world. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host and entertainment journalist Cognac Willowly, and we're here at the Hamptons International Film Festival. And I am here with one of the filmmakers. She's going to introduce herself and tell us all about this film. Yes, so my name is Laura Checkaway, and I'm the director of The Cave of Adullam, which is a documentary. Um, it follows a transformational training academy in Detroit for boys where a teacher is like a father figure and spiritual leader to a group of young men who are all facing challenges and he's helping them go through them and understand themselves more and um, really, you know, helping them so that they don't stay stuck in trauma and are able to grow past it. How fascinating. Yeah. Now tell my audience what inspired you to make this film. So this was an idea that came to me from the actor Lawrence Fishburne. Um, his company had been developing this film with another studio and they saw one of my previous films, Edith and Eddie, and thought that I would Edith be... Edith and Eddie, I love it. Yes, which played here at the Hamptons and won Best Short Documentary in 2017. Um, and actually winning here, that award here, sent us to be Oscar nominated. So that's the best thing about having your film shown right here at the Hansons International yes. Film Festival. It's considered for Academy Award nominations, yes. which is quite incredible. Along with the Toronto Film Festival and I believe the Sundance Film Festival, they're all in line with a direct connection to the Academy Awards. Yes. As a matter of fact, I did interview the director of the White Helmets, oh, yes. and he won okay. the Academy uh, Award, yes. which was quite amazing. Yes. Now, tell my audience about this film. Uh, do you have a lot of cast in the film? Is how many cast members are in the movie? Yeah. So it's a documentary. So they are not actors. They're right. real people, and. The main characters are the teacher, Jason, who's like the sensei of the academy, his right hand, uh, another teacher, Chris, and then four boys who we follow, um, Kevin, Daniel, Tamarcus, and, oh no, don't let me blank, Gabe. Okay, and so, Gabe. so And then a number of other boys who attend the academy as well, but those are the stars. How long did it take you to make this film? It was in development for about, at least from when I signed on, it was about a year of development. And then when we started shooting, we shot for, I would say around eight or nine months, not straight, but um, we we're based in New York City and then would fly down to Detroit and shoot for a week or two at a time. I see. Yeah. Was it a challenge to make this documentary? It's always a challenge. Always right? a challenge. And such a joy because we just love the people in this film so much and hope that they feel the same about us. And so it was just truly a joy. Now, if we want to learn more about the movie, where can we go? What is the website? So you can Google the Cave of Adullam and um, learn more about the movie as well as the academy that it's centered at and our film will be released this fall on ESPN. Fabulous. Yes. Well good luck as Thank we say you. in show business darling. Break a leg. Thank you. Let's air kiss. Thank you. And we'll be back with more interviews right here at the Hamptons International Film Festival. Keep watching darlings. Pink champagne kisses. Frederick Douglass said, it's easier to raise boys than it is to repair broken men. So many of our boys have to live life by trial and error. Oh. In the cave of Adullam, we train them up so they can make these mistakes where it won't be so detrimental when they get out in life. 
pretty soon that boy will become a man. The Hamptons Film Festival is heartfelt and sincere and is more about artistic integrity. It's just wonderful being here. I'm just excited to be around these other wonderful actors and so much talent. I feel really fancy. I've never been before. I feel like they're going to find out I'm from Maine and kick me out. This is an important film festival because it gives us a chance to see the world through other people's eyes. Everyone said, oh, you're an overnight success. Well, I'd been acting for nine years. That was one long night. Please join me in welcoming back Maggie Gyllenhaal. Edward Norton. Rob Reiner. Mark Ruffalo. Ladies and gentlemen, Laura Dern. Marty Scorsese and I did a surprise conversation on that very first year of the festival. This is about watching films the way they were meant to be. Every time you come to the festival in the fall, everybody has a good time. It's a great, great, great weekend for everybody. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Willow Lane. We're here at the Hamptons International Film Festival. And I'm here with this fabulous talent. Introduce yourself to the camera. Uh, hello, I'm Oliver Hermanus. I'm the director of Living, which is opening the Hamptons Film Festival this evening. Now tell my audience the synopsis of the film. Uh, ooh, uh, Living is a British period piece about a man who has very little time left. And uh, in that time that's left, he comes to realize that he's one last thing he might do with his life that will really mean something to a lot of other people. Amazing. Now, what inspired you to make this film? Uh, well, actually, our film is based on a pre-existing film, so it was the inspiration for our film is to retell a very famous film from Japan from the from 1950s. Interesting. Yes. Was it a challenging movie to make? Uh, yeah, every movie is always challenging. It's always the fear of ruining something and not getting it right. So yes, it was definitely challenging. And what inspired you to get the lead? Tell us just a little bit of the story, how you got the lead actor. The lead actor actually was always attached. He was attached before I was. It was written for him. Uh, and Bill Nye is such a famous, loved British actor that uh, it was the perfect opportunity for him to do something exciting. Fabulous. Now, if we want to learn more about this film, yes. where can we go? Do you guys have a website? I think we do. I think it's livingmovie.com. Fabulous. This is about watching films the way they were meant to be. Every time you come to the festival in the fall, everybody has a good time. It's a great, great, great weekend for everybody. Mr. Williams, a little on the frosty side, perhaps. Not too much fun in laughter. Rather like church. What is it up? Small wonder I didn't notice what I was becoming. Dan, you're right. If only to be alive for one day. But I realize it. I don't know how. Uh, I'm Oliver Hermanus and you're watching Cognac's Corner Magazine. Fabulous. Let's air kiss. Mwah. Mwah. And we'll be back with more interviews right here at the Hamptons International Film Festival, darlings. Pink champagne kisses. The Hamptons Film Festival is heartfelt and sincere and is more about artistic integrity. It's just wonderful being here. I'm just excited to be around these other wonderful actors and so much talent. I feel really fancy. I've never been before. I feel like they're going to find out I'm from Maine and kick me out. This is an important film festival because it gives us a chance to see the world through other people's eyes. 
everyone said, oh, you're an overnight success. Well, I'd been acting for nine years. That was one long night. Please join me in welcoming back Maggie Gyllenhaal. Edward Norton. Rob Reiner. Mark Ruffalo. Ladies and gentlemen, Laura Dern. Marty Scorsese and I did a surprise conversation on that very first year of the festival. This is about watching films the way they were meant to be. Every time you come to the festival in the fall, everybody has a good time. It's a great, great, great weekend for everybody. I was diagnosed in 2008. 2006. 2010. I was 32. I was 30. I was only 28 years old when I found out I had breast cancer. Last year, nearly 200,000 women in the United States were diagnosed with breast cancer. That means a woman in the U.S. is told she has breast cancer every two minutes. This video is two minutes long. Every woman on the planet is at risk for breast cancer. And that risk only increases if someone in your family has been diagnosed. So get checked. Check yourself. Perform routine breast exams at least once a month. It's easy. You can do it in the shower. If something doesn't feel right, it's up to you to find out what's wrong. Tell your doctor about any lumps or any unusual skin irritation, itching, or pain. Get regular mammograms starting by at least age 40 and every year after that. Breast cancer may not be preventable. But knowing the facts and knowing your body will increase your chances of finding any cancer early. Early detection means it's easier to treat. These are your sisters we're talking about. Mothers, daughters, friends, neighbors. Please, stay aware. Stay healthy. Stay alive. I survived breast cancer. I survived breast cancer. Sobreviví cancer en los senos. I survived breast cancer. I am still fighting breast cancer. Talk to your doctor. Get regular mammograms. And perform routine self-exams. It's as easy as taking a shower. So it just felt like the natural way. You know? Gotta know your lane. Do, do what you want. Um, I think, I, think, I think we all see ourselves in, in all of those characters in a way, you know? Like, at first you, 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 you white knuckle it, you try to keep it together, and then eventually sort of give in, and you find beauty in places where you never thought you'd see it before. And I think we all have a side of us that's a lot like Charlie, you know, who, who sees a lot of the beauty in things in a way that, that, that we might not, but that still also needs, you know, a helping hand from time to time. That's what the pandemic kind of did for, for all of us. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think you nailed it. It really, it, it brought me back to the movies that I grew up loving as a kid. And we talked a lot about Planes, Trains, and we talked a lot about What About Bob. And God, it was so fun to go back and try to draw inspiration from Richard Dreyfuss' character and Steve Martin's character. And this was an all hands on deck indie filmmaking experience. We had a blast. We really did. This is, this is why we do this thing, which is great. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host and entertainment journalist Cognac Willow Lane. We are here at the premiere of Who Invited Charlie? I want to know who invited who Charlie? Invited Charlie? Yeah, introduce yourself to the My name is Javi. I'm the director of the film. And uh, we shot this film here in the Hamptons in a beautiful place called uh, Georgia Capond. And uh, it's a great comedy. It's about a heartwarming uh, family coming back together on their quarantine. And uh, we really hope everyone enjoys it today. Uh, tell, this is some cast. Yes. How many people are in this film? Uh, so it's a family. So it's uh, the mom, which is Reed Scott, uh, the wife, which is, uh, sorry, the mom, which is uh, Jordana Brewster, the husband, Reed Scott, and Charlie is Adam Pally. So there's three of them, and the kid is uh, Peter Dagger. And tell us a synopsis of this film. It's the last person you ever want to crash your quarantine, and he shows up, but he ends up mending the family. Who the hell is this Charlie? It's Adam Pally. Did somebody really say that in the movie? Who the hell is You'll Charlie? You'll see it. Yeah, definitely. Go see it Absolutely. Now. 
I love yeah. it. I love it. So you're in quarantine for like months, right? Right. And then you're stuck with the worst person ever, but he ends up fixing it's the family. not just... Oh my God, the last person you ever want to invite. Oh my God. Next thing you know, he's mending the family together. Now tell my audience, if we want to find out more about this movie, where can we go? Do you guys have a website? We, we do not have a website. We're in the process of building one and uh, we should... Are you on, on Facebook or Instagram? We're on Instagram. Tell my on Instagram at who invited Charlie the film uh, at who invited Charlie the film and hopefully we'll have a home really soon for you guys to watch fabulous yeah. let's air kiss yes Mwah. thank Mwah. you so much going yeah, we'll be back thank in a you. mommy dogs more interviews more celebrities right here at the Hamptons International Film Festival pink champagne kisses hello darlings you've all heard of dressed to impress one of a kind girl I was brought into this world wrapped up in pearls I love to mingle though my husband reminds me I'm not single I meet and greet both the famous and the elite I ride in limousines drinking the finest champagne wearing fur dazzling diamond jewelry a girl can't complain I live in upscale life, dining in the finest restaurants, eating the best caviar for free. And no matter how much I eat cognac, ooh, ooh, I sip cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. This has been a Crybaby Productions, darlings.